Greetings and welcome to the introduction to astronomy. In this week's misconception in astronomy, we are going to talk about star sizes and find out if we can tell the size of a star from a photographic image. So let's go ahead and get started here. So what we want to find out is can we determine a star size from a photograph? And the answer is no, and at least not generally. In a photograph, when we look at one, the size of the stars, so we look at the image here, all these different stars, they look different sizes. You can see little tiny dots, and you can see some that look like big disks. Really what you're seeing there is, so the brightness of the star will just saturate the detector. And that will make the star appear bigger than it actually is. But really, it has nothing to do with the star's brightness. So really, it has nothing to do with the size of the star, but just the brightness. So in reality, all of these stars are just points of light. And some of them are a little brighter and just saturate that detector. And that would gives us the different sizes that we see. Now the question is, can we ever see the true size of the star? And the answer to that is very rarely. It takes an extremely large star extremely close to Earth to see that. And the best case of that is the star Betelgeuse, which was imaged in 1996. And here we can actually see it as a very slight kind of pixelated disk. You can actually see the pixels there. So it's not just an individual point source of light. We're actually seeing the star there. But there are very few cases where this is actually the case. And Betelgeuse is one, and there may be others by now. So how then do we determine the size of a star? How do we measure that star size if we can't see it directly? Well, there are other methods that can be used as well. And those include things like occultations. So here's an example of that, where we see a star very close to the limb of the moon. Now, while it doesn't look like the limb of the moon there, what you're really seeing is the star very close. You can kind of imagine if you can see the faint limb of the moon here kind of coming up very, very close to the star there. So here we have a star just very close to the limb of the moon. Now, how does that help us determine anything? Well, we can use that to determine by the amount of time that it takes this to happen. How long does it take that star to disappear behind the moon? If it is so far away that it's just a point, it would disappear right away. It would be gone. It would be there and then it would be gone. If it's a little bit bigger and has a slight size to it, even if we can't see that, it will take a little bit of time to disappear behind the moon. And we can use that in various measurements to then determine the size of a star. Another way we can do that is with eclipsing binary stars. So if two stars and one passes in front of another like this, we can look at their light curves. And you can see as one star is eclipsed, then you're going to have a dip. So when one star passes in front of another, you'll get a dip. You'll get a small dip when the fainter star is hidden, in this case, the red star. You'll get a bigger dip when the blue star is hidden, or at least partially hidden, because you're blocking out more of the light from the system. Now, how it dips tells us something about the sizes. The faster it drops to the peak, the, the, large, the smaller the star is. So a very small star will disappear quickly. A very large star will disappear more slowly. So we can kind of see that here in the first dip. Then we have very little, very large star that is passing in front of this fainter of the bright of the other star. And in the second case, we have the fainter star, the smaller star passing in front. And that happens a lot faster. So as each star is then eclipsed and blocks out the light of the other star, we can get estimates of how big those stars are. Now, of course, you'd want multiple measurements of this to really get an accurate determination. But it does give us a way to be able to measure sizes of the stars. So let's go ahead and finish up and summarize here. And what we've looked at is, first of all, that that when we look at a photograph, the size of the star tells us about the brightness. 
not the true size in space. So the size on the photograph is not related to the true size of the star. Betelgeuse is one star that has been imaged directly that we've been able to see. And we talked about several other, other methods that can be used to measure the diameters of stars. So that concludes this misconception in astronomy, talking about whether we can determine the size of a star from a photograph. We'll be back again next week for another misconception in astronomy. So until then, have a great day, everyone. And I will see you in class.